Brent. Hey, what's up, y'all? What's going on, man? How are you? Good and yourself? I'm doing well. Uh, how's it feel? I know this week uh, has been something you've been aiming for for a while, so how does it feel that uh, you're finally on a title fight week? Man, it, feel, it feels, I don't know, it feels unreal. <laughs> God damn, are you good, bro? <laughs> Hey, good shit over there, Spielsberg. <laughs> Excitement. Excitement's uh, getting to everyone. Um, yeah, yeah, damn. But cool, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're seven fights into your UFC tenure. You're already having a title fight. Is there a part of you that this came even sooner than you expected when you when you first signed up in the UFC? Yeah, uh, when, I, when I first got to UFC, it just seemed like it was all happening so quick. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I just had to learn some lessons along the way for sure. And it's like I do feel like it's like the trust the timing type of thing. So, yeah, I feel like this is just all coming about all perfectly at this point in time. Yeah, and I guess, does it feel any different going through this week? Is there more media, more of a spotlight? Do you feel it at all or not really? Um, yeah, t- today is usually like a, a chill day for me on a normal like fight week, but uh, I'm pretty much packed up to the bone with the media, social media stuff, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a little different, and it's, it was cool just cruising up and down Vegas Strip and just seeing my face plastered everywhere, or just seeing this poster and everybody on this card plastered all over the place was, uh, was a, a real cool moment, honestly. One aspect that isn't foreign to you about this experience is your opponent. Um, you guys have been in there before. So I guess um, kind of talk to me about him, the championship version of him and, and kind of where he's at right now. What kind of fight are you getting in the, with on Saturday? Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting in it with one of the most dangerous fighters in the UFC. One of the most de- definitely one of the most dangerous fighters in the UFC flyweight division. He has finishing skills on the feet, on the on the ground, and uh, yeah, I, I, very early on into camp, I had it put in my head that I got to put myself through hell to to win this fight because to win this fight and then in this fight, I'm gonna I'm gonna be dragged through hell and I'm gonna drag him through hell, and I just had to be comfortable in that fire. You guys, um, or you have not lost since you guys first fought. So I guess, how did that fight change you, do you feel like? Did you learn a lot from it? Is there, now sitting there, is there, do you, do you think about it a lot? Like, is it, is it a big moment in your career? Yeah, it was, I think about that every day, honestly. I, I feel like that's one of the, one of the losses that, that'll get to me the worst, just because it's like, I, I never pictured myself ever getting finished. Uh, I, I've always pictured myself losing maybe a wrestling match and just like an actual firefight. I never thought I was going to be able to lose those. But uh, yeah, it, it changed It changed my whole style of how I approach fights, uh, how I want to approach fights, how I approach training and all that stuff. I feel like Alexandre Pantoja made me such a better fighter and his change in my mentality when I go in there and not – not in like the negative you're not going to get that raw dog i'm not going to like i'm going i'm going for it for sure like don't get me wrong that being said is uh, i'm going to be a calculated killer in there and how much do you feel like you've changed since that first fight and how much do you think he's changed i think i've changed my style drastically and i you could see it in there i, I used to walk forward and just throw a bunch of quantity punches and just kind of stay in someone's face and uh, i feel like these last three fights i've just slowly mastered a style that I really want and a championship style that's going to not only not only win this fight but win all these fights to come and I feel like I can adapt my style and fight these guys in different style in many forms I can fight on my front foot I can fight on my back foot I can fight in a taekwondo stance I can fight in a boxing stance I I, I feel like I'm just far superior to, compared to these flyweights and to be 100% honest and uh, I'm preparing for the best Pantoja but if we're being realistic I've watched Pantoja since the legacy fights, and I feel like he's throwing some of the same kind of punches, a little bit of the sloppiness and all that stuff this whole entire time. And it's like, I I feel like if, if we're talking about adapt and skill growth in this time period, I've grown drastically compared to him. Did you feel like even with the Moreno fight, I know a lot of people were surprised by his performance that he beat Brandon. So were, uh, did you kind of still see that complacency that you're talking about in that fight, kind of that plateau? I wouldn't say complacency, but uh, yeah, no, I, just... Just certain tendencies, certain tendencies for sure uh, that I've seen in him in that Moreno fight. And that was the cool part about the Moreno fight is there's 25 minutes of it. You can you can watch that for half an hour, and there's so much homework that we could have we studied on and we could have got done on. So uh, I feel like watching that Moreno fight, there was a lot to learn, but it was all stuff I already kind of knew and, and saw. Over here. Um, this change that you said uh, after that first fight, like just your approach to training and everything, was that based off a conversation with coaches? Was that just like a, a conversation you had with yourself? Like what was there or was there a moment that kind of led to that change? Yeah, yeah. I'm surrounded by really like 
honest people and like open people and people who aren't afraid to hurt my feelings. And it was a conversation with coaches. It was a conversation within myself. It was a conversation with like my family and friends around me of just like, okay, why, why is this stuff happening? And it's just like, uh, cause, cause honestly, like, I, I feel like what lost me that fight is just like, a, a like what I fuck up all the time. It's just like, I'm, I rush things. I, I, I try to get to the finish line and all that thing. And like, if that's doing the dishes or if that's in, in a fight, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't need to get dishes done in 20 seconds and I don't need to get this fight done in 20 seconds. I got 25 minutes to finish my opponent and uh, I can go in there and play with my food for a little bit, you know? Do you think this change into your approach will even extend your career just based on, like, you know, recovery and not just being full throttle the whole time in the fight? Yeah, 100%. I, I would go into fights. I, I have probably, I think, like, three or four fights that are first-round finishes. Um, or not first-round finishes. Uh, finishes in less than a minute, which is which is cool. That being said, is I've also been in fights where I shouldn't even got touched and I was getting hit because I was just taking unnecessary risk and trying to finish the fight. I felt like my whole entire career, it's like it, if we get into a shootout, if I'm getting into a shootout with anybody, I'm the more dangerous fire and I'm going to walk away. That that loss to Alshane Pantoja is the first time I got in a shootout and I lost. And, uh, yeah, I took that to heart. And uh, from here on out, I'm, I'm just a sniper. I'm a calculated killer. And that's how I'm approaching these fights from here on out. And then I've heard interviews from you, and then he was just in here, and you both said the same thing. Like, this is most likely going to be the fight of the night. Like, that's what you guys expect. But historically, fight of the night means it's a close fight, and it's a hard fight. So I would imagine you don't want a close fight. You want, as you said, a perfect performance. So I guess what type of fight are you expecting from yourself? Is it this back-and-forth war, or do you expect this master class performance? Yeah, man, I want a master class performance. I feel like the skills that I've... I progressed along the way in the style that I've adapted along the way. I feel like Alessandro Pantoja will be the perfect canvas to paint a masterpiece on for my title fight. And last one for me. When he was in here earlier, he said that he felt anyone ranked 10 to 1 could be fighting for the title in this division just because of how competitive and how talented this division is. So I'm curious, just because Alex has the belt, do you view him as the actual best flyweight in the world, or are there other guys out there that you, you view as maybe even more talented than him? Um, I don't think why Alessandro Pantoja is the champion is because he's the most talented in the division. I feel like he's beaten people that are far more talented than him. I feel like what Alexandre brings to the table is an iron will and uh, a heart of a lion. And uh, that's what people ask me, like, how do you break someone? Excuse me. How do you break someone mentally like that? And uh, I feel like for the last few days, it's just like, I, you can't, I'm not preparing to, I want to break him mentally. I'm preparing to break him mentally, but I know he's not going to break mentally. I got to go in there this Saturday and break him physically. Hey, Brandon, back over here. Um, What's up, bro? So, you know, your UFC debut, you're crying in your post-fight interview saying you don't want to go back to work tomorrow. Fast forward, you're, you're fighting for a title on Saturday. Can you kind of, kind of uh, re reflect on that? Yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't crying. I got eye poked, so uh, <laughs> I just want to make that very clear, you know. Um, yeah, no, I, I think about that all the time. It's just especially like uh, I was cruising the boulevard, um, the Las Vegas Strip, and uh, and just seeing my face plastered, and it was just like, damn. Like, I don't know, I don't know too many other people's journeys except for like my team directly, or like, but it took so much to get here. It took so much to to get to the UFC, to to get to the top ten to to fight for a bell is just like i don't think anybody knows what you have to put yourself through and the sacrifices you make along the way the people you lose along the way the moments you lose along the way that is just like man hey it took so much to get here that this saturday uh, i'm gonna take it all in and i'm gonna give it everything i fucking have and uh i'm just gonna embrace this journey to the fullest because you know this is this is a crazy moment and this is uh <clears throat> this is like a a once in a lifetime opportunity almost, you know. On that same note, uh, you were on the prelims, your last fight. Dana said he fucked up. You said um, you're never going to be on the prelims again. Your next fight, your co main event. Is that just. You, you want to know something really cool? And I forgot about this is uh, last time we were cutting weight at the. Last time I fought Alshandra Pantoja, we were cutting weight at the quarantine hotel. And uh, we're, I was running on the treadmill, then he jumped on the treadmill and ran next to me. And we didn't say anything to each other. We gave each other, like, a head nod or whatever. But the last words we said to each other is just, like, bro, why are we not 
co-main event on this card why are we not we're like we're like we should be higher up on this card and that was like something me and him said to each other and it's just cool that two years later we're fighting for a belt for the co-main event and finally um what would bringing the belt back to factory x mean to you um so at my gym i'm the longest student there which is which is dope i, I didn't even realize it until like this year but it's like I, i'm the longest student that has been there i've known coach mark for most of my life at this point in time and uh i feel like the opportunities the the uh, the way i view my teammates as family member and all that together is just like if i go out there and win this belt i feel like i just improve all of our lives i improve all of our opportunities i can get more say in my teammates being on a card with me i see out he won a belt his teammates three and oh or he was three and oh and got signed to the ufc he's like I have teammates that are eight and zero UFC fly that should be a UFC fly the UFC caliber that's not in the UFC yet. Luis Grule and it's like that that opens up opportunities and gates for all of us. And uh, I don't think that I'm just winning this belt for me. I think I'm winning it for the whole team for sure, and I'm winning it for the city and the people around me. Brandon over here, you mentioned on UFC Embedded that being an uncle is the best title that you carry. If you went on Saturday night, does that change? yeah for sure no not at all <laughs> i'm sorry yeah no nothing changes with that honestly I, bro and i have it in my head too just like fuck the bell i'm out for revenge and i'm out for notoriety and i'm out for respect i feel like i've been getting shitted on since i've been in this uh been in the ufc i've been a classic fucking underdog every single one of these fights and it's like on alexander pantoja i get me being the underdog for sure but fuck the bell bro i'm out for revenge and i'm out for respect and i saw you mention uh, the legacy fighting days earlier both of you come from that promotion. Obviously, he came from the RFA banner, and you're from the LFA. I guess how cool is it to have two champs from that promotion now meet at, for the UFC belt? Yeah, yeah, and it just uh, it speaks volumes of that promotion. I think another thing that speaks volumes of that promotion, uh, as far as me goes, is I came from LFA and then immediately jumped in the top ten of the the UFC division and was just fine. You know, I was. I was just tried and true. Anybody that beat me in the LFA got signed to the UFC right afterwards, and it was just like that. That promotion is the reason why I'm here for sure. And obviously, you're no stranger. You see how like all this, this, uh, these title fights have been filled with rematches at the flyweight division. If you become champion, is there someone you'd like to see next? Maybe a fresh face. And I'm not looking for a fresh face. I'm on that Raw Dog Revenge tour. I want to see Brandon Moreno next. Thank you, Brandon, over here. I think both you and, and Pantoja are excellent in the scramble position. Do you feel that this is an area where the fight could be won and lost for both you guys on Saturday night? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel like um, I feel like it, if I don't think safely, if I'm not making calculated moves in there, then for sure that that's a, a situation where I could put myself in danger. It's like I'm going to scramble, I'm going to move, I'm going to create chaos, but I'm going to do it super calculated this time around. I'm not going to do it just to do it. But yeah, I agree. Is that what you kind of took from the first fight that you fought with Alejandro? Like, you know, maybe you could have been a little bit better in the scramble? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And just safer and just thinking of like, um, yeah, just just checking, crossing my T's and dotting my I's in the, in the scrambles for sure. Because I was just like scrambling. And so far, like, I've just been the better scrambler out of everybody. There's been zero consequences to some of the mistakes I was making in jujitsu. And uh, I didn't really respect too many people's jujitsu as far as it goes in in the UFC or in any MMA fight for sure. But yeah, uh, Alexander Pantoja definitely made me tighten up that game. Uh, I've been training with Michael Lear, who just won Worlds this last week. And uh, that was like one of the first things that I did as soon as I lost that fight was... I switched and trained with the all jujitsu team, and uh, that's that's been paying dividends. In your preparation, obviously this is five rounds. Uh, have you had to change it up much? Are you worried about pace and stuff like that? Because, uh, but like similar enough to the scrambles, you guys set a pretty heavy pace in there as well. Yeah, it's not something I'm worried about. It's something that I walk on. Uh, I feel like uh, I have like a a, a pre fon a pre fontaine mentality of just like uh, a suicide pace is the best pace, and you know. Saturday will be a good day to die, you know? Thank you. Brandon, why do you feel back here that Pantoja is the perfect opponent for you to implement your new style against? Um, I feel like Pantoja is an opponent that's going to make, that's going to put us both in danger. I feel like Pantoja is going to risk it all and not only put me in danger, but he's going to put himself in a lot of dangerous positions. And uh, 
I feel like if I'm just being calculated, I could capitalize all over that. And also wanted to ask, you said there's been a lot of changes. Were any of these changes that the coaches had possibly suggested previous that it took you having the setback to open your eyes kind of to what they were saying? Most likely, honestly. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate you. And Brandon, uh, so whose idea was it to roll around Vegas in the classic? Oh, it was uh, it was my videographer's idea. Yeah, I didn't. That's not up my alley at all. I almost wrecked that shit because uh, I was over here looking at posts. I was like, damn, is that? I was like, look at that one. Yeah, so, yeah, not my idea at all, but uh, it was cool. That was actually really cool. I've never drove a car like that. And then I saw your Instagram. You're already thinking about that post-fight meal. How do you like the hot wings? What sauce and bone-in or boneless? Oh, man, I bone, boneless for the most part because I like a messy person. So, uh, yeah, boneless for the most part, but um, I don't know. I, I like, I'm bored. I like medium, mild, and stuff like that. So, yeah, n nothing crazy. But uh, what I'm craving more than anything is just chips and salsa after I weigh in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.